Hi friends, in this session, let's learn about for each loop container. Let's go to SSIS packages and add new package and go to containers in SSIS toolbox and drag for each loop container into the package designer. So we use for each loop container to iterate any control flow task for based on the enumerator type. So in our last session, we learned about for loop container. For loop container iterates the control flow task for given number of numeric times, which is fixed number of numeric times. But whereas for each loop container has different enumerators collection, let's these are the different enumerators we have in for each loop container, which supports iteration of control flow tasks based on the definition that we provide for these enumerators. So let's learn about all of these enumerators, when to use these enumerators and all. So let's begin with the first enumerator that we have, that is for each item enumerator. So let's go back. So I have dragged for each loop container to the package designer and I opened this and I went to collection and we have enumerator section here and where we have we can see all enumerators of this task. So we use for each item enumerator when uh, we have the values in hand and when we know the values that doesn't change and when we know the values to iterate the any control flow task then this is the enumerator that we use. That means we will define this item enumerator, the values here itself, instead of getting the values from any external source like file, variable, or HDFS, SMBO enumerator, node list enumerator, based on any other file or any other variable. When we want to define the values to loop, to iterate, here itself, then we use for each item enumerator. So let's see how to use this item enumerator. So we have columns here. So let's click on this button. Now add the number of columns you want. So based on our requirement, we can add as many we want here. By clicking on add, it will add as many as we want. So let's add one column for now and click OK. So let's enter rows here. Let's enter row one, row two, row three, like that. You can enter the fixed number of rows. So now let's go to variable mapping. So, so this means, so in the collection, I entered all these rows. So it means it iterates this many number of rows, but for each iteration, we have to store this value in a string variable or in a based on the type of this column, because I have entered text related data in this column zero, we have to have a variable as string type to store these values. Otherwise, it wouldn't support right. So for each iteration, we have to store this value in any variable, string variable. So here, actually, it's not, I'm not storing these values in any variable. So in order to pass to the next task or next control flow task, we have to store each value in a variable for each iteration. So that's why we have to map this column zero values with a variable. So that's why I have to go to variable mappings and then click on variable dropdown. So if we don't have variables, then we can create a new variable here and create a new variable. Let's say C zero values. otherwise value because for each iteration it uh, it takes a value 
so and click because the value type is string source type is string I'm, I'm keeping it as is and click OK so index is 0 because the column starts with 0 so the index starts with 0 so column 0 maps with index 0 so it begins from 0 it starts from 0 okay now click OK so if we execute the package it actually executes without showing any message or anything you can't say like we can't see the value changing or not right in order to see the value changes let's add control flow task expression task and double click on the expression task and just uh, add this value here and click OK so I'm just using this expression task to uh, for uh, for debugging to show you the value changes only it actually doesn't do anything here so let's enable breakpoints let's enable on pre-execute event here break when the container receives the on pre-execute event I enabled it and click OK so now let's uh, let's execute now so I'm going to use a watch window to show you the values changes or not so let's click on the watch tab here when you see in your designer so now let's uh, add your variable name here so my variable name here is C zero value right um, it is sure it's not detecting the val uh, variable name so let's uh, let's clear this and add again user double colon and then c0 value i'm sorry something is wrong let's add again c0 value yep okay so now the value is showing as row 1 so because we are in the first iteration so let's click f5 so value change it to row 2 now let's click f5 again now value change it to row 3 so click f5 again so we we only have three values in the item enumerator so it, that's why it is showing it's completed so the value is changing and uh, value in the variable is changing right we can use that value in any control flow, flow task within the for each loop container so now let's add another column go to collections and add another column here like column 1 okay now let's add row 1 so let's add values in the column 1 as well like uh, data 1 data 2 data 3 so let's go to variables so because that's a string type again let's add another variable for string type that is c2 column right so c1 column c1 value and click ok so index is 1 so now click OK and execute again so here let's add that variable as well C1 value so it is showing data 1 now now click F5 so changing values to row 2 and data 2 changing values, values to date row 3 and data 3 and completed so because we only have 3 values in the item enumerator so this is how we use for each item enumerator so I hope it's useful for you and uh, let's follow my videos to know 
more about for each contain container thanks for watching my video